Okay, so here we are in part three of our Game of War Android Xamarin app. And when we left off, we had just finished our uh, card class, and then we had created our deck class, which was able to create decks of cards and shuffle decks of cards. So we're ready to move on to setting up our gameplay view and activity so that we can actually click this deal hand button and have our cards show up here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our deal hand button. So I'm going to come over here to the gameplay activity and we're going to set up our button. So getting our button object resource ID uh, deal button that was what we named it and then setting up a button click event so in here what are we gonna have to do well when they click this button we need to create a new deck of cards and shuffle that deck of cards and deal out the first two cards to be displayed. All right, so just a little bit of kind of pseudocode there in our comments. And so those two cards will show up here. And then we'll actually get into some game logic. So the first things first, how do we create a new deck of cards? We have this deck class, and we had set up to where we could call our create deck method which would instantiate our list and go through and set up a deck of cards so since our deck class was a static class all we need to do is call the class type dot create deck right and that's going to come over here and call the create deck method which sets up our list and goes through and populates it with a bunch of cards and then shuffle that deck of cards and so we'll call our deck shuffle and remember our shuffle method we need to know the number of times we want to shuffle and so let's just go ahead and say we want to do it three times of course the higher the number there the slower it's going to go but the more uh, it will be shuffled it will be a, a little more random so if we want to deal out the first two cards to be displayed we could just pull the top two cards off of the deck and then display them now we're displaying them in this image view um, control here and we had named those card one and card two and so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out uh, the same way that we do with our button and so we have an image view and I'm gonna stick with my naming convention here so we'll get our image view and then that's resource ID card one and then same thing over here for card two. All right, so that we can access those to be able to display our cards. Now remember our cards reside in our solution here in our drawable section. So we want to grab the, the top two cards from the deck. So we're going to just create a, a card. Uh, we can't call it card one. We'll call this um, selected card one. And that's going to be our deck, uh, what did we call it? Cards. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Oh, we didn't create an accessor for it. We made it private. That's not going to work out. So right now, like if I just wanted to pull the top one off of there, it would look like this. So let's just run through here and then I'm going to show you what, what we're going to have to do to make this work. Oops. And at this point, you probably do want to go ahead and set this up so that you could test 
to make sure that as you set up your gameplay activity, uh, you're getting the expected uh, kind of behavior from your app. So let's go ahead and wire up the main activity to start our gameplay activity. So over here in the main activity, we'll want to create our button, just like we always do. And this is going to be our resource ID uh, start game button. And then setting up our click event. So in here, remember we use Intense to start a new game and move to the game play activity. So we'll set up an Intent and we'll move from this to the game play activity. And then we'll use the start activity and give it our intent. And so this way, as you're testing and working on this gameplay activity code, you can run your program, click Start New Game. That will take us over here to our gameplay uh, view, and you can click Deal Hand, which will start our button click event. Okay, so let's talk about the merits of forethought here, because I realize I had painted myself a little bit into a corner. So essentially, what I want to be able to do is call that image view set image resource and pass it the ID of the card that I want it to draw. And so several things uh, kind of came up while I was trying to figure out how to do this. One, uh, that folder of cards that I had put in Drawable was no good. So I went ahead and moved all the cards to the Drawable folder. Because really, the way you need to write this is should be the resource.drawable.name of the item you want to draw. Well, uh, the second thing that came about is we can't start these with a number, and so most of these cards are starting with a number, so I've had to renumber them. And so as I've gone through and renumbered them in the Solution Explorer, I started thinking about what is the best way to then pick out, essentially, the resource drawable item that I want. So I created a method down here called card ID. I'll pass it the card that I want to get the ID for and doing two switch statements. One is face value and inside of here the suit. I can then return the appropriate resource drawable ID back to the image resource that I want to set. So I added a little bit of work for myself. Um, having to go through here and change all these file names and you can see I've, I've named them things like clubs ace and I set up some regions down here to make these look ni nicer but all that's inside of here is for each case of a particular card rank, like this is rank 4, writing a switch on the suit, so clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades, clubs 4, diamonds 4, hearts 4, spades 4, right? And so as I rename them, making sure that I'm sticking to that little naming convention. And then I set up a default down here, so if something goes wrong, it's going to put the joker in. Um, so it's just a very big switch statement, not the most elegant solution. Uh, but it's going to get us through the project, and, and that's the point. So at this point, I'm going through and renaming all of my files in my Solution Explorer, making sure that I've got them in the drawable folder, uh, and I've set up this switch statement in this method down here. And then for our cards, card 1 and then card 2, we'll be able to uh, grab that particular ID for our two selected cards that we just pulled right off the deck. So, much renaming later, I have my public int card ID with that switch statement inside of there that I showed you, and I've got all of my files renamed over here in my drawable section, and so now we are able to create a deck, shuffle it, uh, pick out our two image views that are on our GUI, and pull out the first two cards in the deck and display them. So if you want to give that a run at this point, um, just to make sure that the images on the cards are showing up the way that you want them to, now would be a good time to do that. Now when I run, right now I do see, um, I see the Five of Spades and the Queen of Diamonds, but I'm getting a problem in my display where the cards are very large. 
And so I probably want to come in here to my uh, activity or my AXML and try to determine what I can do about that. You can come down here in your properties of those image views and find the scale type. Center inside will help uh, kind of scale those down and make sure they fit correctly inside of that image view. Okay, so now that we know how to display our card image on the um, interface, let's talk a little bit about this section right here. Now we can't always just grab the top two cards from the deck unless we're keeping track of how many cards we're working with. Now the problem with this uh, button that we've set up, this quick and dirty little idea, is that we're creating a new deck and shuffling it every time, which is probably not what we want. So we need to move our, our deck uh, creation kind of out of this button because right now if you run this app and you just click deal hand, deal hand, deal hand, um, you create a new deck, shuffle it, and display a new card each time, which is fun, uh, but doesn't really work for the purpose of our gameplay. So you can see here I just move these out of that button event. So all the button event is going to do is uh, deal our cards, right? Because it's the deal hand button. That's what it's supposed to be doing. Now we can't just grab the top two cards from the deck every time. We're going to have to actually set up a little bit of an iteration to move through our deck and keep track of how many cards we have so we know when we need to shuffle. So I set up a, a, a counter here outside of the button event and then inside here we will select our card based on the card counter and then the card counter plus one incrementing the card counter every time the button is clicked. So this should give us, if we run and test, this should give us the expected behavior. And you could also set a breakpoint in here to look at that array and make sure that that's actually working the way that it should. So walking through this, the first time we go through, um, I've set this to start at zero, so card counter should be zero. It pulls the, uh, let's see, seven of clubs off of there, right, seven of clubs. And then, and so I could actually look at my deck of cards and see, you know, I've got 52 cards in here. So the first one's the second of seven of clubs. The second card in here is a seven of spades. And so as I advance this, I should see the second card be selected is the seven of spades. So that looks correct. So then it's going to display and, and go ahead and move through here and display uh, the seven of clubs and the seven of spades on my screen. So that is what I see. And so if I click that deal hand button again, what I should now have is a card counter of one, and this is going to give me a card counter plus one. Now, if we think about that, then we know that that's not right because we want cards zero and one the first time, two and three the second time, four and five the next, right? Does that make sense? Because I, if I leave it like this, then I know that when I deal again that I'm going to always get that second card which is in the first position in in that first uh, card position, right? So how do we need to increment our counter in order to make this work right? So the easiest thing to do is to add in a little if check right here that would actually move that card counter position forward one more if it's not the first time through. So the first time through, we definitely want 0 and then 1, which is 0 plus 1, right? So looking at this, right, I've got 0 and then 0 plus 1. Looking at my deck, position 0 is a 10 of spades and position 1 is a 10 of diamonds. And so if I can continue through this, then that is what displays on my screen, a 10 of spades and a 10 of diamonds. If I click deal hand again, my card counter is being set to 1 and then I've got my card counter plus 1. So this needs to be a, a greater than or equals to 1. That's a little logic error on my part. Um, in order to get that counter to increment forward the way that we want it to. This is one of those things where <laughs> I, I know it comes with time. Um, as you are learning how to program it can be a little frustrating as you trip over your own logic errors. Um, and I, I just want to encourage you not to get frustrated. You know, I've been programming for a long time and still manage to make silly little mistakes like I'm sure some of you are probably seeing. 
All right, so I re-dealt the or reshuffled the the uh, deck here. So we have a Queen of Clubs and a Two of Diamonds, and so that is what I see on my screen. And so when I pull a new hand, now my card counter is two and three. And so that is what we want. We want card two, which is the seven of spades, and card three, which is the ten of clubs. And so if I can continue through, that is what I see. And so by adding in this if statement right here, we're basically saying um, if it's not the first time through, because the first time through we're zero and everything works the way that we want. Uh, but if it's not the first time through, then we actually want to add two to the counter. Uh, and this is, there's a couple of different ways to do it, but this probably makes a, a great deal of sense, or at least I hope so, uh, to, in order to get that counter the way that we want it, so that we're always advancing through the deck. And then we need some logic in here to check, um, is this the end of the deck? If so, we need to shuffle a new one. Right, and get a new set of 52 cards to play with. And actually, when I think about it, I want to do this up here. Before I would grab the cards off of the deck. So, if the card counter... Oops. Is... What do I want to say here? So let's say if the card counter is greater than or equal to 53, or I'm sorry, not 53, 51, then that would be um, sufficient, right? Oops. We would know that there are enough cards left because uh, 51 and then 52 would be the end of the deck. If not, then we know that we are ready to shuffle a new one. And so I think at this point all I would do is just shuffle the deck. And then we could start the whole process over again by resetting the card counter back to zero. And that would start our whole process over again until a winner is declared. So at this point you can test your, um, your deal hand button here and if you're having trouble displaying your card images you could work on that. Uh, we've got our a little bit of our gameplay logic set up at least so that we can deal out some cards. In the next video we'll start working on some actual game logic of looking at these cards and determining who has won the hand so we can start updating that score and getting a little bit more into our gameplay. So I hope you've enjoyed this so far and uh, look forward to the next lesson, uh, the next video, part four, and, and we will get uh, moving on this game. See you next time.